All right, what's up, guys? First off, uh, I'd like to welcome you to this channel. Uh, to tell you the truth, I don't really know how it's going to go. My goal, similar to my blog, is I'm going to try to upload daily. But as you know, some of you guys have seen with that, sometimes that fluctuates a little bit. But for those of you who continue to support me, continue to support all my platforms, thank you very much. It doesn't go unnoticed. Uh, but again, I've got several different sports topics. It's going to be kind of similar to like what I've got going on with this blog. Uh, you're going to see something new probably, again, I hope, every day. That's the goal. But again, it's going to be something similar to that. Um, in terms of format, who knows? You know, I guess we'll just kind of go with it and we'll see whatever happens. So uh, if you like what you see, again, please share, please comment, please make recommendations, please do, uh, you know, like, um, you know, and you can even, you know, leave, uh, you know, constructive comments uh, for me either in the comment section or, you know, if you want to mess me privately. But today we are going to talk about uh, a little bit of sort of kind of a hot topic. Now that's kind of like, I should say, like the main sort of crux of the channel. Uh, that's going to be the gist of it that we're going to, you know, we'll go over again, similar to the blog. We're going to go over, you know, some of the things that uh, are like the current issues in sports today. I'll share my opinions on them. And then, you know, we'll kind of, uh, you know, maybe give a little bit of insight as to where I think things will go from there. Uh, and the issue that we're going to talk about today is in regards to college athletes and getting paid. Um, I know a few months ago, or a few weeks ago, rather, on the blog, I wrote about, uh, you know, recruiting scandals and uh, teams cutting corners in that regard. Now we're going to talk about could players one day in college athletics make money legally for what they are doing while maintaining their collegiate eligibility. There is something called the NIL laws. That's what, that's the basis of what we're going to talk about today. NIL being, uh, being name and image laws. And right now there are several pieces of legislation either at the state or at the federal level that are supported by members of both major parties that would one day make it legal for college athletes to if they wanted to, uh, and if they were given such an opportunity, sign endorsement deals while they are a collegiate athlete, therefore allowing them to make money. That's never been allowed before. And there have been several athletes who, you know, none that made the stupid enough mistake to, to make such a public uh, mistake, but several who have done things related to that in the business sense um, you know, signing with agents, signing deals, more so to say, as soon as I graduate, I'm going to sign or sign with you. That's illegal. Uh, they can't do it. I'm not illegal in a criminal sense, but it's illegal in terms of forfeiture of eligibility. Several athletes have either had to lose their eligibility, lose their awards, schools punished. Uh, Reggie Bush being namely one who signed with an agent. But today we're going to talk about specifically these NIL laws that are proposed, what I think about them and about the possibility that one day collegiate athletes could be financially compensated more than more than just their um, monthly you know, scholarship refund stipends. So again, these laws more so um, introduced and California has done it. The federal uh, government and the House of Representatives has discussed this possibility. Um, but obviously, with the pandemic and everything that has stemmed from it, certain things have, have justifiably cut it in front of the line. But there's going to come back up this conversation again. In California, in just a few years, it is at least on track as of right now. Things could change, but it is on track as of right now where it will be illegal in a few years for collegiate athletes to sign endorsement deals and not lose their eligibility while they are in school there. Again, that's never been allowed before. And to tell you the truth about what I think about this, I think I think it will happen. I don't know about soon, but I think nationwide, since more and more states have introduced this legislation, some passing it, such as California, I think in the very near future, uh, eventually enough pressure will be put on other states or specifically their other institutions to say, okay, 
the top tier athletes are saying, I want to make money now. So I'm going to go play at schools or uh, schools in states rather that already offer this additional incentive about the possibility of earning money. And that's eventually going to hurt, you know, these other programs, these other schools who are in states where that's currently not allowed. And maybe it's not really on consideration or under consideration as we speak. So that's kind of something that I think will certainly, you know, put under pressure the coaches and the athletic directors to eventually appeal to their higher ups who could eventually, if especially if it's a state university, appeal more to state legislators, to governors, and eventually the federal government that something needs to be done here to try to get this on more of a, a level playing field and perhaps for everybody to do this. And truthfully, I know that, okay, obviously uh, some schools have taken, you know, hits, obviously pretty much everybody's taken a hit athletically regarding, you know, the pandemic and the fact that there have been empty stadiums and crowds, you know, greatly reduced. But there, there is the money there to say, okay, you know what, we'll pay athletes. And understand this, these NIL laws, they're entirely mutually exclusive from the sheer idea of, you know, schools paying athletes a salary. This would be if, say, Gatorade wanted to sign uh, Trevor Lawrence, for example, while he was at Clemson to be able to promote, you know, their newest drink. That that's what this is. It's it's you know strictly for endorsement purposes, not salary. But I think that that is very close behind. To tell you the truth, I think that we're going to be in an era where, in our lifetime, for sure, I'd even say for sure, within the next ten to fifteen years, the idea that college athletes should be paid is going to gain traction. Uh, those of you who you have read my blog, and again, if you have, I greatly appreciate that. You would have seen a few days ago my post regarding uh, the NBA's Pathway program. I think that's going to put a ton of pressure on the NCAA. They, you know, NCAA people in, uh, in Indianapolis and Mark Emmert, their president, have insisted that it doesn't. But I certainly do believe that in the next you know few years, you will see more and more of these athletes that are choosing to take other avenues to, to their professional careers. And that's going to put a lot of pressure on decision makers and college sports to say that either we're going to adapt or we're going to get left behind. And that's, I think, going to compel them to say it's time to ditch the antiquated thinking of that these athletes who perform in the case of football and many of the Power Five conferences in front of 80, 90, 100,000 people in some cases it's a completely outdated and antiquated view to say that those are regular students like everybody else. And that's not to be, you know, disrespectful to other students, but I always like the whole analogy of when 80,000 people show up to take a math test, that's when we say these athletes shouldn't be paid and that's when it's justifiable. But to my knowledge, though, that hasn't happened yet. So... Until 80,000 people are ready to watch a chemistry exam, ready to watch a math exam, with all due respect to those majors and those students that are in those areas of interest, until that happens, I think we need to have more of the conversation of paying college athletes. And especially now, there were schools, especially out in the Pac-12, and now granted, on the West Coast and in the conferences, the Pac-12, the Mountain West, the Big Ten and the MAC, where... They postponed their season initially. There were many schools all over the country who, while they played football in the fall, they deemed it wasn't safe to have students on campus, in the classroom, in the dorms in the fall. So the, the basic premise, I guess, of this entire outdated NCAA thinking is that student athletes are no more than the regular student in terms of what they provide for the university. Financially, that is utterly false, and I don't know how anybody could ever believe that it actually is true. It's ridiculous, to tell you the truth. But what I will say is this, 
they should, of course, be treated as such, treated as equals to the rest of the student body. But again, they bring in so much more for the university and for them to see so little of it is just wrong. Quite frankly, it's wrong. So when we go back to this fall and the example then, if you were to say that no, uh, college athletes should not be paid and the reason for that being that they you know, do no more than the regular student. Well, the regular student, whether they wanted to or not, in some cases at some colleges and universities, they weren't allowed on campus. The football players, again, many of them clamored for the return of their season or for their season just to start on time for the conferences that didn't postpone. And players were given the opportunity to stay home in most cases if they wanted to. But if you deemed it safe enough to bring back football players and not safe enough to bring back students, professors, and faculty, then clearly there is a disconnect here. It, it is genuinely playing both sides against the middle. And to me, it's just saying that this NCAA idea that, uh, that these student athletes are students at the end of the day and nothing more that just serves as a means to an end. And until they find it inconvenient to, to keep saying that, then at that point, they'll start paying. Until then, they won't. So here's my take on it. I think we're, we pushed the conversation back a few years, but it's just postponed. It's not canceled. It's not stopped. These... I think athletes understand that there has been a serious financial hit. The pros had to endure it as well. So I think that these athletes know they'll have a chance in a few years of getting paid to play college football, getting paid to play basketball, soccer, softball, whatever. They know they'll have a chance and they should be because in a normal year, there is more than enough money. From each program, or there's more than enough money always generated by maybe not football, but for sure broadcast rights, ad revenue, that generates millions of dollars across the board. There's no reason why if you're going to spend that money on other things that will not service these people, that will not service these kids, you need to cough up the money and pay them as well. All right, so I think I got that all off my chest today. So then uh, I appreciate, again, everybody for watching. And again, please like, comment, subscribe, if you will. I'm going to try to post on this every day. That's the hope. And if you have anything that you would like for me to, to do differently, to try to recommend, or if you want to make a recommendation, please do so. I'm all ears. Just open up the, you know, in the comments. If you want to message me uh, privately, perhaps on a different platform, uh, I've got my Facebook page now going for you know for this uh, YouTube as well as for the blog, and I'm going to be posting updates there frequently. So if you want to message me there as well, please do so. Again, thank you guys, and uh, in a bit.